let's see, Copernicus replaces Aristotle, and Newton creates a mechanical universe obedient to universal laws, and at every step, the church seems to object. Are we talking about science versus religion? No, no, because, because the church essentially there doesn't object. When I said the church went over backwards to help Galileo, they did. I mean, it's a, it's a myth that's grown up in the intervening centuries. Uh, the, the, the cardinal, the cardinal in charge wrote to Galileo several times saying, our astronomers agree with you. We know that what you're trying to say. We know what you say about these observed facts is true, but you've got to go slowly. You've got to give us time. You can't just tell the believers that everything they believe is apparently wrong. And Galileo said, no, all or nothing. And so they better look. The other criticism for what was going on came, for example, from, 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 from government sources too. The French, who made life hot for Descartes, uh, also threw out the Jesuits. So it isn't just, it's authority saying, hold on, don't crack the mold so that everything falls apart. Uh, take things sensibly and reasonably. That's their view, of course. One of the things I've noticed is uh, you have a sort of Buster Keaton approach to history in which the, uh, the little man especially when he's up against the big institution, is often the champion, and, and that translates sometimes into the practical man versus the, the theoretical professor. So that yes. um, barrel makers, boat builders, um, artillerymen yes. often come up with answers that elude the philosophers. I don't know that they come up with the answers. I think there's a case for arguing that sometimes they, they rub their noses in it, as it were. They say, it's no use telling us that, that physics doesn't describe real things. Look what this cannonball is doing. Is this Scotch mist, they say, you know? So they're, they're hitting reality, as it were, practically all the time, as opposed to the philosophers who say these are just lines in the sky. There's practical TV, too, and I am intrigued by the way in which your television programs are put together. Um, uh, a stone is thrown in the present, it falls into the past, Galileo drops a ball with a spiral pattern, and you're holding it in the contemporary world in a in an Italian square. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got to keep the audience interested all the time, haven't you? So we need all these devices. One of the things that, uh, that I like to do is to take the program and I think it's ready before we shoot it and graph out uh, how difficult is it. So it's, you know, difficult, not so difficult, medium, very difficult, and then impose on top of that how busy is it, how much distraction is there, noise and so on, and put that graph on. Um, how, uh, how relaxed is it? What pauses of silence? Are there moments when the audience can relax and enjoy and think about what they've just seen? And very often the sad thing is that you see all the bits you like most in the programs are, you know, busy and difficult and funny and noisy, and then you have to go and shift stuff around a bit, and that's when all these devices come into being. You like to start and stop in the same place. Uh, that is, you, you pose a sort of an intriguing question, what am I doing here in the beginning? You start at Schoenbrunn um, Vienna. Uh, in Vienna because, I guess, their plans were being made for yes, the Council of Trent. The original plans were being made there, and then your problem is to find a reason to go back. I, I like to do that because it closes the circle of the program and it makes people feel as if they've seen something complete. Uh, it took a long time to find a reason to go back to Vienna. Lots of times I thought I was going to have to abandon beginning in Vienna and start somewhere else, but every time I tried to start in somewhere else, I couldn't find an end for that either. And then fortunately, uh, going on beyond uh, beyond Newton to Halley, I discovered the importance of Boscovich, who happened to be there at the time, and, and the circle was complete. Now, it works very ingeniously, I think.